Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another Ask Ian Q&A on Forgotten Weapons. I'm Ian, of course. Our question today comes from CrabLegs21 on Utreon, who asks, In your opinion, and in hindsight, which country had the most optimized cartridge for their primary infantry rifle in World War II? Additionally, which country could have benefited most by switching to that cartridge prior to the war? So answering this requires a little bit of definition setting. Are we talking about the best cartridge? Are we talking about the best cartridge for the infantry rifle? And what exactly is the definition of standard infantry rifle? So if I was asked to pick the best cartridge for an infantry rifle in World War II, I would say 8x33, 8mm Kurtz. Basically because it's the least powerful cartridge out there short of 30 carbine. It is a round that has sufficient terminal effect to be practical uh, in an infantry rifle, but without the massive overpower that you get with all of the full-size rifle cartridges like the 8mm Mausers, the 30-06s, the 762 Russians. And there's a, but there's a reason, well first off, does that fit the question? Maybe, maybe not. The Sturmgewehr was never the standard infantry rifle of the Wehrmacht, although the Wehrmacht wanted it to become the standard rifle. It never actually did during the war. But I'm going to ignore those concerns and say my first choice would be 8mm Kurtz. Fastest follow-up shots, it's a rimless cartridge. Yeah, it's bigger in diameter than it ought to be. It's not the most efficient way to do a cartridge for a box-fed magazine gun, because the magazines get really long. But uh, the Russians certainly saw the potential of it, and we see 7.62x39 setting a major trend in arms development after the war. Now the reason that countries didn't use lightweight cartridges like that in World War II is that going into the war, and well, going way back, there was a, re a realization that you're not just supplying a cartridge for an infantry rifle, you're also supplying the cartridge for the supporting machine guns. And for logistical purposes it really makes a lot of sense to use one single cartridge for all of the infantry's small arms. Well, for the rifles and the machine guns. The problem is that in order to make optimal use of machine guns, and we see this in World War I, machine guns shooting at quite extended ranges, as well as come 19, well even in World War I, but especially in the 1920s, 1930s, you're using those machine guns to shoot at things that aren't just people. They're shooting at airplanes, they're shooting at vehicles, and all of those things put together, the range and the targets, require a cartridge that has significantly more terminal ballistic impact than uh, what's required for just shooting at a soldier. And so that kind of sets the requirements for a cartridge if you're using the same cartridge for the rifles and the machine guns. And for that reason, basically every country in World War II used a cartridge optimized for their machine guns. The machine guns were considered a more important weapon than the infantry rifles. Now it's interesting to look at a sum of what we wouldn't, we would still consider full-size rifle cartridges like 6.5 Swede. Um, the Swedes in the 1930s looked at that cartridge and realized that they actually considered that underpowered for their machine guns, and they went and developed a second cartridge, 8x63, specifically for machine guns, especially like anti-aircraft machine guns. Um, that's basically the case head and diameter of 6.5 Swedish with the case length of 30-06 and an 8mm bullet. It's a really powerful cartridge. Uh, and that was adopted and used in Swedish machine guns uh, because it gave them, it allowed them to exploit the full capabilities of a proper fixed machine gun. So uh, with that in mind, that's why everyone's using overpowered cartridges. If I go back, if I have to choose the best cartridge that was actually chambered in a standard infantry rifle, or in the standard infantry rifle, I would probably go with 735 Carcano, because it remains the least powerful uh, cartridge in standard use in you know, a standard infantry rifle in World War II. Now I am acknowledging that that's going to reduce the overall effectiveness of the machine guns, that are being used in that caliber, but I think it's the best sort of compromise that you can get. And the question here is, what's the best cartridge for the infantry rifle? So by using 735 Carcano, this is by the way a 128 grain bullet at about 2500 feet per second, so it's, it's a full power rifle, but it's really on the bottom end of power of full powered rifle cartridges. Um, there are 
potential options in 6.5s that will also be light recoiling. We already talked briefly about the 6.5 Swede, but that's basically almost identical ballistically to 6.5 Creedmoor today. Um, and of course the Swedes didn't consider it you know, sufficient for machine guns. Um, it's a little more powerful than 7.35 Carcano, even though the bullet diameter is smaller. It actually uses a heavier bullet than the 7.35. If we look at the other 6.5 cartridges that were in the war, um, 6.5 Japanese is hindered by its use of a semi-rimmed case. I, for just ease of feeding, I would want, I think any cartridge that's going to be called the best of the war has to be rimless, so that rules out the 6.5 Japanese. The 6.5 Carcano, which you might think if 7.35 Carcano is good, well 6.5 is going to be even better in all those ways. Well the problem with 6.5 Carcano uh, is that it was a, a long round nose bullet. It was not a modern bullet by the time World War II starts. That's going to really hinder its use in machine guns. In fact, hinders its use in machine guns sufficiently that the Italians also went and developed their own heavier machine gun cartridge, that being the 8x59 Burita, which is really pretty similar to 8mm Mauser, but with a heavier standard bullet, 210 grain bullet. For the same reason the Swedes did this. They decided that 6.5 Carcano with its round nose old style bullet just wasn't sufficiently effective uh, in heavier machine guns. Uh, 735 reduces the bullet weight, increases the velocity, which is a good thing for, uh, for machine gun use. It's also a larger diameter bullet, which means the bullet has more internal volume for things like tracers and armor piercing uh, elements, things that militaries like to do, especially for use in machine guns. So 735 is still going to be uh, it's going to be leaving behind some capabilities of machine guns, but I think it's the best for rifles. Now the second part of this question, what country could have benefited from it the most? That's a tough one. I'm going to go out, I think I'm going to say the United States, because consider, like the US was the one country really using self-loading rifles through the whole war. Yes, the Russians had the SVT, but we gave everybody M1 Garands, unless they were in the Marine Corps. Uh, imagine the M1 in 7.35 Carcano, a shorter shorter cartridge. This is all hypothetical, of course, there's no way the US could have done this conversion. We were barely adopting, we are barely getting the M1 into mass production when the war started anyway. But if you imagine the M1 in 7.35 Carcano, it's getting closer to the idea of like an M1 in uh, 30, or in uh, 276 Pedersen, you've got less recoil, the gun can weigh less, the receiver can be shorter, you're going to get faster follow-up shots, uh, you're probably not going to get 10 rounds in the clip, it's probably going to stay 8 because the cartridge diameter is more or less the same. But uh, the M1 would be a significant, I think it would be a nice step up in the M1. It would also be really interesting in the BAR. You could probably lighten the BAR substantially. Uh, and with less recoil you have a gun that's going to be more controllable from the shoulder in full auto or from a bipod. I think it'd be really interesting to see what could come of a gun like a BAR in 735 Carcano. So uh, those are my thoughts on World War II cartridges. I think, uh, I think the Kurtz idea is a bit justified by the fact that uh, the Soviet Union certainly saw the potential in it and went ahead and it created a whole new new wave of small arms uh, concepts after World War II, although again, worth pointing out, it caused the Soviets to go to a two cartridge standard. They didn't use 7.62x39 in their supporting machine guns. They used it in the squad automatic weapons, the RPDs, but everything bigger, the Goryanovs, the Maxims that were still around, eventually the PKs, they get 7.62x54 to better harness the capabilities of a machine gun. So uh, thanks to Crab Legs for dropping the question. If you'd like to have your question answered in a video like this, head on over to Patreon or Utreon, subscribe, help support Forgotten Weapons, and I have threads running on both of those platforms each month to get Q&A questions for videos just like this one. Thanks for watching.